all, we are on day two of the prayer live prayer challenge day two. If you joined us yesterday, we talked about Elijah tonight. We are going to talk about one of my favorite Bible heroes. That is probably the most underrated Bible hero in the entire old Testament. Do you know who I'm talking about? <laughs> We're going to dive in tonight. So day one, we talked about one, our spiritual reality, because all too often we're so fixated on the scene that we forget the unseen, right? We forget that we can even pray because of Jesus, who is the way and made a way and who now lives to intercede for us. We need to remember that with him on our side, with God's protective eye, always keeping watch over us, like it says, Psalm 121, he is always keeping watch over our lives. We have 24 seven surveillance over our life. And knowing there is a whole swarm of angel armies surrounding us. Because then when we realize that we aren't wasting precious time doubting our God's goodness, right? We aren't begging him to be good to us in our prayers because we know he is good to us. We aren't pleading with him to be on our team as if we need to do that. No, he is our good father who loves us so much that he gave us his one and only son. Can I get a holla? With this knowledge and the remembrance of his love, it changes our prayers. So we talked about that yesterday. If you missed it, guess what? It's already uploaded to my YouTube, youtube.com slash at Heidi Lee Anderson. And if you are just joining us, we are doing a prayer challenge where we are learning about three example prayers in the Bible. Because when we look at these example prayers, it re-ups our prayers. It brings back fervency and power and just life when we realize the truth of God's word. So I'm so excited that you're joining. I'm all excited to dive in. We are on day two and tonight we are going to follow good old Jehoshaphat through 2 Chronicles 20. Do y'all know Jehoshaphat? He's honestly one of my favorite Bible characters. And man, does he give us quite the example to follow. So verse one, like I said, we're in second, second Chronicles 20, not Corinthians. He's not New Testament, you guys. Verse one shows us that the Moabites, the um, Ammonites, and some of the Muonites, sometimes when you don't know how to pronounce words, you just, you just say them really fast and hope that no one picks up on it. <laughs> But he declared, these three armies declared war on Jehoshaphat. That's the context when we meet him here. Now, verse 30 shows us Jehoshaphat was terrified by the news. And wouldn't you be too? But get this, not only is his knee-jerk reaction to go to the Lord in prayer in his moment of need, but he also commands a whole nation to do the same. I mean, sometimes we fight our battles alone, right? But like with Eve, that is only what the serpent wants. He would love nothing more than for us to climb back into our shell like a snail and shut out everyone else and just do this life thing on our own. When God has so lovingly given us one another, the body of Christ, to link arms with and pray together with us, right? We were not made to do this life alone. We were not made to grow in our faith alone. We were made to be together in community. So I'm super excited to be joining you guys. The second thing we see with Jehoshaphat that we covered this morning in today's devotional is that he didn't spend majority of his prayer talking about himself and his problems. We see that he spent his time remembering who God is, praising his character, declaring the promises that God made to his people long ago because he knew what we need to know, that our God is a man of his word. If he says, if he says something, if he promises something, we don't have to doubt that it'll happen, that it'll come true. One chapter in my book, P.S. is going to be good. It's titled, But What If My Reality Doesn't Line Up With God's Promises? And I mean, you're going to have to buy the book to check out that character story, <laughs> but that'll help answer that question if you have it. But for tonight, we are zeroing in on one last piece of Jehoshaphat's story here in chapter 22 that so many of us constantly fail to do in our own prayer life. Do you know what it is? Let's look at his prayer together. I'm going to read it for y'all. 
O Lord, God of our ancestors. You alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you, O our God. Did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Verse eight, your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. They said, whenever we are faced with any calamity, such as war, plague, or famine, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us and you will hear us and rescue us. Do I need to repeat that for anyone tonight? You will hear us and rescue us. Verse 10. And now see what the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Sarah are doing. I'm going to learn how to pronounce these names someday. You would not let our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt. So they went around them and did not destroy them. Now see how they reward us, for they have come to throw us out of your land, which you gave us as an inheritance. Oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. Anyone else need to pray that prayer tonight? We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. And then get this y'all, as all the men of Judah stood before the Lord, it says with their little ones, like wives, and children, it says, the spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was Jehaziel. Sorry if I mispronounced your name, Jehaziel. And here is the miracle. Like this wasn't just a group of adult men gathered together to pray at their men's prayer breakfast. No, there are women and children present. Like, excuse me, how did they teach their children the art of silence? Because like, I don't see that in the text. And I, I feel like that's a big mess. M moms around the world would have liked to know. Right? <laughs> I feel like my sister is somewhere rolling her eyes at me. Anyways, this is what we miss that Jehoshaphat and God's people knew to do. When they prayed, when they prayed, they didn't just talk. They listened. Prayer is a conversation with our God. It is not a PowerPoint presentation about all the things that we did, that we think, that we hope, we feel, we dream for, and we ask for. Like if you're anything like me, at times I've grown a bit too selfish and a little bit self-centered that I've done most of the talking and the asking. And then in Jesus's name, amen and literally stand up and go about my business. <laughs> y'all, I had an interview with Georgia Brown in my Bible study, which y'all, if you wanna study the Bible with me, I've just opened the doors for March. We're gonna follow Jesus's week, or Jesus's footsteps through Passion Week. But this last month, I interview people in my group, in my Bible study, and I brought in Georgia Brown, and I love what she said. She said, there was one day when she heard the Spirit convict in her heart that said, as she got up, after saying, in Jesus' name, amen, she felt this clear voice in her heart that says, don't you want to hear what I have to say? And she said she immediately sat down. Like, um, yeah, I, I sure do. And it's a worthwhile thing to ask ourselves the same thing tonight. Do we view prayer as a two-way conversation, giving God the chance and the time and the space to speak back to us where we actually pause and chill and listen? Or because we live in a culture in which we literally only give three seconds Facebook found per post and reel before we scroll right along. Do we only give three, some, three seconds for something to speak to us and then we move right along? Do we do that to God too? Do we only give him three seconds and then we move right along? Because like we see in 2 Chronicles 20, they literally parked it there. Like, 
No one moved. I love how Charles Spurgeon wrote it in his commentary. He said, you could have heard the sound even of the wind among the trees at the time, for they were as hushed and as quiet as you were just now. And here's an expert, an excerpt literally taken out of a paragraph in my book. And it says, anyone else have to wait around at the doctor's office? From our pediatrician to my oncologist, there I sit in the lobby for minutes on end as if I didn't have a time slot assigned to my name. And you better believe I always peek down the hallway like clockwork every five minutes to see if the nurse is coming. Sometimes every three minutes, <laughs> probably more like one. But I know the nurse is coming. I have never sat in the waiting room, unsure if I'll have to walk back out that day, unseen and sent home without help. No, eventually in due time, I know I'll see the doctor. In the same way, these people of God, they were sure help was coming. They didn't know when or how, but eventually, in due time, they knew God was on the way. So there, in the lobby of life, they stood and waited patiently for their appointment to come. Y'all, today, from this point on, when we pray, how about we give God some time to respond before we shut down our laptop and say, thank you for listening to my presentation. Because if we do, we might hear a word from the Lord himself, like these men and women and children of Judah did. Starting in verses 14 through 17, I want to read it for you because this is such a powerful, such a powerful chapter. It says, the spirit of the Lord came upon one of the man standing there. And he said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness, but you will not even need to fight. Take your positions, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go, again, go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Now, you can read the rest of the passage after that. It is pretty incredible how it all plays out. But this is tonight's takeaway. From day two in this prayer challenge, we're ending tomorrow. Day three is the last day, and I'm going live, I believe, 8.45 p.m. Central. I would love to have you join me. But here's the takeaway for tonight. Pray and then wait expectantly for God to move, answer, and show up. Because like Psalm 5.3, it says, let's declare, let's declare this along with the psalmist. It says, in the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. Not waiting impatiently, doubtfully, or even passively but waiting expectantly because our God certainly hears and he would never forsake his own. Thank you guys so much for joining me. This is literally two pages out of my 250 plus page new book coming out. P.S. It's going to be good. I just want to share it with y'all because I think sometimes it can be hard to see God in the challenges of life. It can be awfully hard when we are sitting in the middle of our stories and we don't know how it's going to play out. But guess what? These guys didn't get Second Chronicles. They didn't get this book handed to them and said, this is what's going to happen. No, they had to wait in the middle of this story, but they waited expectantly. And so that's what my book is all about. Not only how to wait in the middle of our stories, but how to trust in the Lord in the middle of our stories and see how he moved. Every chapter is a specific question we're all asking, like, what if my reality does not line up with God's promises? What if the worst case happens? What if I don't know what to do? There are certain Bible heroes that ask these questions, but when we follow in their footsteps and we watch how God moved, then we remember that the God who is the same yesterday as he is today, well, he's going to move again and we can choose faith while we're waiting in the meantime. So again, if you buy my book now, you get my audio book for free. 
The book is pretty fun because I made it in two texts, two different fonts. I wanted this so badly. I wanted just a normal Times New Roman like you see in every book, but then I wanted my handwriting in the page because I don't know if you're like me, but I love to write in the margins and then give it to my friends. And so I wanted to feel like I wrote my notes and you're getting my copy of all my thoughts in the inside. So while the book is super fun, the audiobook, you hear my passion, you hear my intention, and I think you pick up on my humor a little bit more. It's way more fun, and I think it's where it's at. So if you buy the book today, if you buy any time before it releases April 4th, you get the audiobook for free as well as access to my four-week course, Faith Over Everything. And then also, if you think this is super fun, I have a Bible study that I just opened the doors to again in March. We're following Jesus' footsteps through Passion Week, and this is what we get to do. I break down the passages live, but we also connect via Zoom calls. So if you're looking for a community where you can study God's Word, and you think Easter has kind of been boring lately, well, guess what? The resurrection is way too awesome to be boring. And when we follow Jesus' footsteps as if in real time, it's going to bring the story back to life. So I hope you join me. Everything is on my website, This thismotherhand.com. It's also linked in my bio. I love you guys. I'm going to pray for us before we end because, again, this is a prayer challenge. It feels very silly if we did not pray together. But I want to answer quick questions quick. Um, Heidi Lee, I love that our names are the same. I just love you. She said, your talks mean so much and so does your book. Keep doing what you're doing. You're incredible. I love you. Okay. She has the gift of encouragement and I need to give you my number so you can... <laughs> You can send me encouragement when I need it. I love you. Bethany, my girl, are you here? Bethany Riggs, come on, y'all. If you're not following her, hop on over right after this live. So true. All right, speak on it. That I did, girl. I love you guys. Look at all these people joining in. Chime in. This was so encouraging to me. Such a conviction. Is is prayer about me or God? And that's what I challenge. If you didn't get this morning devotional, you can still get it. Um, if you sign up in the link in bio, it'll just automatically be sent to you. Um, but what was I saying about that? I'm sorry. I just read the next comment. I totally, I totally spaced on what I was saying. Um, Maybe you guys can help me because I'll answer this question first. Oh, okay, yes, prayer on it. Okay, y'all, it's 9.45 here. It's time for my bed. But I, that was the challenge for today. When we look at our prayers, let's do an audit of our prayers. Are we talking more about ourselves or are we talking about our God? Because if we look at Jehoshaphat's prayer as an example, I mean, man, did he lather on the prayers. He's like, did you not do this, Lord? And we can look back in God's word and say, did you not do this in our own prayers too? I've just, I've loved this example. So that is our challenge for tonight. I'm so excited for the book. I appreciate your Bible-based perspective and humor. That means we have the same humor and you actually get it. I'm so glad because most of the time my sister looks at me and she's like, Pfft. So not funny. All right. The audiobook is only temporary, right? So you get it for 90 days. You get it for three months after the book releases. Um, and if you join my launch team, you actually get it a full month in advance. We're, we're, I'm sending out a form if you want. Anyone can join my launch team if you just love to talk about books. If you're excited about this book, you can just join it. Um, but you get my audiobook ahead of time, March 6th, I believe. Um, I'm going to share more details about that. So be on the lookout in my stories so that you can um, join that. But yes, the audiobook, you'll get it for three months. And if you want more time with it, let me know. I can easily send that to you. But I, I think you'll fly through it. I do that when I pray. Okay, great. Thank you, guys. Let's pray, and then we're going to close what's included in the launch team. So just a bunch of fun lives like this with me. There's also prizes. There's a whole list of weekly prizes. Mainly, it's like if you just want to share about the book, you can do it however you want. If you just want to, if you listen to a chapter and you're like, this sentence stuck out to me, you can just share it in your stories. For this chapter from Heidi's book, P.S. It's going to be good. That's it. You can just do it one time. You don't even... You don't even have to say much if you don't want to, but I would love it. I would love anyone that wants to. I mean, what does one do in a launch team? I know it's very weird. I've joined so many launch teams and I thought that you'd get the book for free or I didn't know, but I, uh, that's why it's super rare. I keep, I'm just amazed. I had a friend author that sent me a message. How did you get them to give out your audiobook for free? I've never heard that. And I wanted that in my audiobook said I don't have the rights. So anyways, um, it's kind of a, it's a unique thing that you actually get the audiobook for free. 
Um, but yeah, you just talk about it. Where do we sign up for the launch team? All right, y'all, come on. Let's go, let's go. Um, I'm sending out the link. I think I'm gonna start posting in my stories. Post it. Did you? I normally cannot pick up on my Minnesota accent, but there it was. I heard it when I said posting. It wasn't as strong that second time, though, was it? Posting. Posting. Anyways, I'll be posting it in my stories. I cannot take my serious myself seriously. This next week is starting in March. Right now I'm focusing on launching the Bible study through Passion Week, and I have an article for Well Water Women coming up, which is super exciting. Greetings from Big Bear. Man, I would love to go to California, y'all. Okay, you're distracting me. I've, I've gotta go, I gotta pray, I gotta pray, and then we'll go, all right? Please join me. Dear Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for sending Jesus to this earth, for taking our place, taking care of the punishment of our sin on the cross. And when he came back to life, man, did he not only defeat death and the punishment of our sins, but now he calls us more than conquerors. Now you call us more than conquerors because of it. Thank you for sending the son. Thank you for being so good to us. You are a good father who gives good gifts to us. Thank you for every woman who here who is seeking after you. It says in James that when we draw near you, you draw near to us. That that is a promise that we can take to the bank. And so we trust that as ever, everyone right now who is seeking you, we know that you are drawing near to us. We are so grateful for your Holy Spirit leading us the way, empowering us along the way, showing us the truth, convicting us and comforting us. We praise you, God, for being the God of all comfort. Thank you so much for leading us on. Please bless us in this next challenge ahead as we're diving into prayer tomorrow. Open our eyes and let us see. We love you, Jesus. It's in your powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Be there, be square. 830 no, 8.45 p.m. Central. I just wish I could hang out with you guys all night, but we will do that tomorrow, Friday night. All right, I love you. I'll talk to you soon. We'll see you then.